It's been a really late spring. It's been very wet, but not a lot of heat, so everything's slow starting. As you can see, I've got some peas coming up. Um, one of the issues I've had with these peas this year is something's been eating the leaves off quite a bit. Um, I'm not sure if that's ants or worms or what. I'm hoping they survive okay. Um, as I've said before, I use no chemicals in my garden, so uh, I'm hoping I can defeat them or maybe I need to get a predator in that likes whatever's eating my uh, plants. Uh, I still am fighting this seemingly never-ending battle against quack grass, but every time I pull up a root like that, I'm winning a little bit slowly. I finally have some cucumbers coming up in here, and uh, they're quite lovely. The uh, grape that I planted seems to be doing quite well. I hope it continues, and uh, maybe we'll have some grapes one of these years. The rest of this bed is just beginning to come along. It's quite late, but uh, like I said, we haven't had much for heat and lots of rain, so hopefully with some more heat here, we'll have a crop this year that'll be good. So today I'm going to be planting some more trees. Um, what I've got here, as you can see there, it's a root ball off a little spruce tree I'd planted that I got from my dad. Now, the tree had been attacked by a porcupine. I tried for three years to keep it going and finally this year I decided it was time for it to go. So I've dug it out and dug a hole here. Now. The soil in this hole is quite sandy and a lot of clay in it. So what I'm going to try to do is boost that soil before I plant any new trees. The trees I have are here. I dug these out from under one of my spruce trees. As you can see, I wasn't able to get the full root because of all the spruce roots growing around it. So I've soaked them in water for two days just to give those roots a bit of a boost. Now I've dug my hole, I'll only be planting one of these trees here. Underneath it, I'll be putting this. And I know it just looks like moldy grass, which is pretty much what it is. But that mold is actually a mycelium, which is, of course, fungus. And the mycelium is basically the internet of the world. It, without it, we would have nothing. You see mushrooms in your yard and you think it's bad, it's actually good. It means you have healthy soil. So, first off, I'll be taking out some of this bad dirt yet. Then we're just going to put this moldy looking composting hay in there. Now the reason I'm putting this in the bottom is as it rots, it'll give off warmth, which will encourage the root growth, as well as, as it breaks down, provide nutrition for the tree. Then I'm going to take some of this, which is really well composted. It's a combination of chicken manure, grass clippings, and household compost that has broke down really well. As you can see, it's very wet. It's been sitting out in my wheelbarrow and it rained. So I will be using some of this as well around the edges of this. Now, I've, I've taken out some more compost here. I'm going to use some of the dirt that was in there as well, mixed in with this compost. Um, as you can see, this compost is broken down well enough that the worms are really enjoying it and getting in there good. And so we're going to put some of these worms right next to this new tree. Now that I've got my hole kind of dug, I'm going to take my tree and I'll put it in. I'm going to use the light dirt and just lightly put it in around these roots. The reason I'm using the light dirt is it crumbles easier than this compost does because the compost is quite wet. But right near it will be the dirt. Now, I honestly don't even exactly know what kind of tree this is. The birds were nice enough to bring it to me by having the seeds and their droppings. It dropped under my spruce tree, started to grow. Now that it's a couple years old, I'm transplanting it. Now I'm going to put some of this compost in here with the really good worms. I'm going to break it apart. So 
sometimes in your compost you end up with stuff you don't want in there, garbage, or this is a little chunk of steel that somehow got in there and is all rusted. I don't really want that. But all you have to do is pick through it as you go and put your compost in. Now, around the top of this, now that I've got my dirt and compost in there, I'm going to put more of this partially composted grass. The reason I do this up around the top is it adds a protective layer that helps keep the moisture in the soil so that the sun and the wind don't take it away. You want to be very careful with trees not to overwater, or they will actually will drop their tap root. So if you happen to be gone for a week and can't water them like you do every day, they will die. So you need to water your trees sparingly so that they maintain that tap root. And these are going to get an initial good watering, and I'll keep an eye on them. If they start to look a little dry, I'll make sure they're okay just because they're new trees. Within a year or two, I'll basically be able to let nature water them, and I'll leave them. The wonderful thing about getting trees this way, rather than having to go out and buy them, is that if one happens to die on you, oh, there's some more garbage we'll pick out. If the tree happens to die on you, it's not the end of the world because it didn't cost you anything, and you just have to wait another year or two till you have another sprout or find another sprout and plant it. You can always plant more, and once they do take off, you've got them. I've got several that I planted this way. Some are about a foot high now, some are I've got one reaching four feet almost, and they were started from little sprouts like this in my yard. It's not a science, it's just been trial and error, and uh, sometimes that's the best way to learn. You can also do a lot of research on YouTube, I think it's one of the best ways to research in my opinion. And uh, so now I'm going to water this tree, and uh, hopefully in a couple of years we'll have a good strong tree here. Now all the water I use in my garden is rainwater. The reason for that is I don't want the chlorine that they put in the town water. Our town water comes from a local river and I don't want that chlorine in there to bother my plants. Now you can take some of the chlorine water and leave it sit and let it gas off, the chlorine that is. Or you can go to your pet store, buy uh, some fish food or some fish water neutralizer and that supposedly works as well. I would prefer to not have any chemicals in it at all, so I like to use all rainwater. Get yourself as many rain barrels as you can, and uh, that way you can collect all the rainwater. You're also helping out your city by preventing from overloading your sewer systems and your storm drains. Now, it might not seem like much if you only collect a little bit, but imagine if every person in your city collected two barrels full. That's, uh, that would be 90 gallons. So, 90 gallons per household, you can figure it out, that's pretty good. The other thing you can do is try to design your yard to absorb that water so it's not running into your storm drains. And then you're helping out your community as well. Initially for a tree like this, I'll give it a full two gallons of water on the first day and then I'll leave it for say a week or so depending how dry it is. I just check the moisture level in the soil every day. With the amount of compost and natural um, items we put in this soil, we're building up a really good soil here. It's going to be like a sponge and it'll maintain a lot of water. And especially with the rain we've been having this year, I shouldn't hardly have to water this. The other thing you want to watch, if you're watering your plants during the day and it's hot, you want to try not to hit your leaves. Because a drop of water on a leaf, the sun will reflect through that and can actually burn your leaves. 